So you may have noticed there's been a change at the fuel pumps from E5 to E10 fuel. So what does this all mean? Will it affect your car? And really, are we better off just pissing in the fuel tank? Oh, well, in this video, I hope to answer all those questions and see what it means for us petrol heads. Hey, I'm Kev and welcome to North Coast Workshop. Today I'm going to be covering in this video the topic of the common Q&As regarding this new E10 fuel which is available now on the four courts at petrol stations in the UK. It came in in September and the plan of the video is to cover the most common asked questions and hopefully answer them in a simplest way possible because I'm not the brightest myself so I'll break them down into basic jargon, hopefully easy enough to understand. So what is E10 fuel? So, E10 fuel is a new unleaded fuel available at petrol pumps across the UK and it is made up of 10% ethanol and 90% unleaded fuel. So, does this affect diesels? So, fortunately for all the owners of dirty oil burners out there, this does not affect diesel at all. It is just unleaded fuel that is affected. So, why is it changing from E5 to E10? So the high percentage of ethanol in E10, which is 10%, compared to the 5% of ethanol in E5, will hopefully have less of an impact on the environment. Also, renewable ethanol is an alcohol-based biofuel which comes from agricultural sources such as corn, sugarcane, and a byproduct of paper waste. So as well as reducing the levels of non-renewable fossil fuels in petrol by 5%, the growing of the plants ethanol is taken from absorbs CO2 from the atmosphere. So is this just happening in the UK? So actually E10 has been used for some time now across the world in countries such as the US, Australia and countries across Europe. So does this affect my car? So 95% of cars are unaffected by this change and all cars built after 2011 should be unaffected also. But if you want to make sure for your own vehicle, what you can do is you can go on the UK government website and pop in your car details on there and it will tell you if your car is compatible or not with the new E10 fuel. So what if my car isn't compatible and can't use E10 fuel? So some cars older than 2011 and the majority of classic cars won't be compatible with the new E10 fuel. They will have to continue using the super kind of premium grade fuels which are more expensive and these fuels will continue to use the 5% ethanol mix such as Tesco Momentum and Shell V Power. So what happens if I use the wrong fuel in the car? So it's not the end of the world if you end up putting E10 into an E5 car. It won't cause damage there and then, it's not the same as putting diesel in a petrol car, but you should look to fill up the tank with E5 as soon as possible to prevent any long-term damage to the car. So what will E10 fuel do to a non-compatible car? So ethanol basically degrades fuel components such as gaskets, seals and fuel lines. It is also corrosive towards zinc, aluminium, brass and lead. And this means that over time E10 fuel will significantly damage the fuel components in non-compatible cars. So is there any long-term effects to an increase in ethanol in our fuel? So luckily this new 10% ethanol petrol won't cause any more damage to your engine. But sadly, they found that ethanol produces less energy during the combustion process, which means you will get less miles to the gallon. And it's also mentioned that ethanol has a higher octane rating than just standard unleaded fuel alone, which means the higher percentage of ethanol now in the fuel slightly raises the octane rating overall for the new E10 fuel. So anything else to be aware of? So ethanol, if unused for a long period of time, can actually absorb corrosive water in the fuel tank. And this means it could damage a car that is not used for a long period of time that contains that fuel, such as a car that's maybe stored over winter months and only used in summer. And sadly also with the slight drop in miles per gallon from a higher ethanol mix in our fuel, this means we will be visiting the petrol pumps a lot more often. So a quick fact for you here, while I was doing research for this topic, I found out that since 2016 they have used E10 fuel as a standard reference fuel for all their car emission tests and performance tests. You learn something new every day. So 
So what's my thoughts on this new E10 unleaded fuel? Well, I've been running my car now for some number of years on super unleaded. I always think the car runs better on it, so that's why I do. But I will be looking to run E10 in my car for a while to see how it responds. The car gets between 25 to 30 miles per gallon on average, so I'm not overly fussed if the E10 fuel makes it worse, you know, for economy. But I am looking to see if there's maybe a slight increase to the octane rating in this E10 fuel, which has a positive effect on the car for power and performance. And if I do have any findings from that, or any positive feedback or negative feedback, I'll bring that to you on the channel in the future video. So make sure you subscribe down below to catch that video. Oh, and I've popped down below in the description all the links for the sources I've used for my research for this video. And you can use them as well if you want to gather any more information for yourself. So hopefully you found the video useful and informative. If you have, then please hit the thumbs up button, much appreciated. And while we're on the subject of petrol and miles per gallon and brake horsepower, if you click this video up here, there is a video for my stage one remap. So it's my car on a rolling road doing various power runs and also receiving its first remap. And then this video here is a video that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. So thanks for watching.